Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is the Wix online meeting 253. It's March 9th, we're rolling our way through 2023. And this meeting is recorded for those of you that aren't with us right here, right now, you know that, and everybody that is with us right here, right now, usual suspects, welcome, Ron, Zach, Bert, thank you for joining us. Let's talk about what we're gonna talk about today. If there's anybody else hanging out in chat, go ahead and say hi. Uh, we always love to know who's uh, here with us. All right. Uh, we're going to talk about Wix 4 release plan because that's what we do. Uh, there are changes to the release plan. So uh, put your listening cap on. It's coming. Whoa, listening cap. That's a straight out of kindergarten. That was awesome. Haven't thought about that in a long time. All right. And then we will do the usual issue review and triage based off of the Wix 4 release plan. And we'll take questions and comments, things that people want to talk about at the end. Zach has already hinted that he has something to uh, bring up. So uh, I guess he'll get to go first, assuming he types fast enough. All right, anyway, let's just jump right into it. Wix 4 release plan, two big changes. Number one, RC3 has gone well, as we're gonna see when we look at the bugs, there haven't been real big issues, real things that we've been worried about, which means that we're gonna do what we hinted that we would love to do, but we're, I was a little afraid to say that we would do. We're gonna suck up the Wix 4 release by a week. So we're going out next Friday, uh, with a Wix 4, RC4 release. Sorry, I make that clear. RC4 release. And I I'm doing it, oh, what's that? A week and a half later, uh, we're gonna call R4, R um, G RTM, GA, whatever term you wanna say. We're gonna declare it done and dusted a week and a half later. That assumes nothing derails us in the next few days, but given what we've seen, there's no reason not to. So. Yeah, it's happening. We're we're basically there. At this point, you could say under a month away, Wix 4 will be done unless something shows up to say that, uh, no, that we shouldn't do that. But I think we feel pretty good about that. So one week earlier than we originally said last week, March 17th, RC4 comes out. My hope is that we really don't take anything after RC4 uh, and we just kind of sit around and then we just do a 4.0 release because semantic versioning says we have to rebuild all the bits to put the correct version on them, which is lame, but that's one of the benefits we get for running, no wait, one of the downsides of running semantic version. Anyway, March 17th is coming around next Friday. Look for the release because it's probably going to be there given the number of issues we've seen and people are picking it up. So that's good. On that front, let's go talk about the issues that we have, things that are up, and you can see why I think we're pulling it in for a week. Bob, are you ready? I'm ready. All right, here we go, triage. These are the issues to triage right at the top. And let's just jump right into them. 7253, WSA initialize should log informational version. Um, Bob opened this and he already said we should put this in V5, not disrupt V4, because it's not that important, although it'll be very useful in the next review, right? Yeah, it's it, it's given given semantic versioning. Speaking of semantic versioning, um, you know, four zero 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 will be the version number of uh, Wix four in you know three weeks. Um, so yeah, there's no reason to disrupt it now. But yeah, I should go into um, uh, the next version as soon as we can, so that we can track which particular pre-release is is running so we're not talking about which five much yet but so does that mean you're gonna put this in future and give it to yourself i am assigning it to myself and i will put it in milestone v future great just a quick reminder for people that weren't here when we talked about the new world uh when we are in a current release we can put things in v future assigned to somebody and we will then pull from those when we start the next release ideally pull everything out of future and put it into the five or into the next release in this case five so we will be talking about that in the not too distant future because we're releasing Wix 4 on april 4th um registry search element in util does not allow for searching of the value or existence of name in a key issue number seven two five nine Blair opened this, and I think, Bob, you corrected him that the title probably is not correct anymore because you can. You just have to look use a different attribute. It's, it's yeah, it's a weirdness of the registry. Uh, you know, we have registry path, like file path, um, and then there are items under each path that have values or are named values. 
So the terminology is inconsistent, which is, I think, the, the crux of the bug here. So up for grabs and we go on? Yeah, I think so. I mean, okay. I, I it's hard to say that either one is wrong. I would lean slightly toward name being the correct name. <clears throat> uh, but it's you, know, you can't say that value is wrong. Right. It's just a little weird. It's not consistent, and consistent would have value. Well, dun -dun -dun. yeah, it, Sorry. it no. would. But, you know, at the moment, registry search for MSI in app search for MSI is, you know, ha there's different functionality between the two. Okay. Um, registry search in Util for burn is generally a superset. All right. All right. So up for grabs if someone wants to go talk about, I mean, this is a small fix, but talk about how they want to fix it. Yeah. Right, take that in the future to kind yeah. of normalize the words, look at all the words, propose something and do it. That'd be fine. Uh, prerequisites other than .NET from Winget using ID and version. Other than .NET from Winget using ID version. This is 7262. Um, I didn't quite get this. Install a DLL using Winget. I didn't think people ship DLLs via Winget, but I guess you could. Yeah, there's um, nothing stopping it. Especially yeah. they recently added support for um, you know, essentially zip files for the idea of portable apps. Uh, but it is still primarily for delivering apps. So this would it's, be a bundle thing? I don't No, I, mean, I think the idea is that it could be used anywhere, like any, a package like, reference. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> no, we're not going to bring this in for package reference because um, we already have a way of doing all these things, and I don't want to support yet another one inside all that. So not as a package reference. As a thing that Burn could talk the Winget API, I don't. I don't even know if that. I don't know if that even works well, especially for ranges and all kinds of things. Um. Hmm. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I guess that's kind of interesting. I don't know what the. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't know what. I, it, I sorry. I, I'm agreeing with you that um, it was likely the intent to support Winget as a source for a package group, but. Currently, Burn doesn't. Yeah. Well, no, yeah. See, it's just really weird because no, because what we get to a would... runtime thing that people use at install time. It's not like a build time thing. It's like it, maybe you run it in your build process to download stuff for your build, but not for getting bits today. It could change. Well, the, but it's uh, not no, that. I think, I think what I think what they're looking for here is the idea of Winget as a download URL. As a source for for the the package download like in a today. bundle, then yeah 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 okay. I'm thinking I'm I'm I might have read too much into uh, well because the same person I believe posted something somewhere else that maybe a discussion about Winget, but yeah, I think I, I'm reading I'm reading too much into what isn't actually written there. Yeah, so I I think we should I don't. know. I don't want to keep this around. It's too underdeveloped. So I guess we could close it and they could try to add more comments or enhance their thing if they really want to and then let us know. Um, but it's too vague to really know what they want. And I don't really think we should be pulling wing it in at this time into either the build process natively in the tools like or in the build process like package ref or the extension command line or in burn with all the variants that this would have until wing it became like a I guess a known platform. It's just I don't know about that. Yeah, I mean they're getting there. It ships in Windows now, so that, that certainly helps their case. But I don't know. Yeah. yeah, I don't understand what they're asking for here. Yep. So let's go ahead and close it. Some if they need to provide a lot more detail on what they're looking for, they can go ahead and edit the issue if they want, and then yeah, we can come back okay. and look at it. But it's not clear. All right. Um, these I open based off of that I, I hunted down, people made vague allusions to things not working. So I went and hunted them down and 
distilled them down into an issue. Um, launch conditions were not being converted under include elements. Pretty sure if, this is during conversion. So during conversion, if you had a condition element, which needs to turn into a launch element now uh, with a condition attribute, it didn't do that. So I went and found that that did not work in includes, clean that up. And so this is fixed as of last night. I left in triage just so we would talk about it. Um, because it's one of the few interesting bugs that have come up in RC4. Um, and it's in conversion. So that was 7264. And then 7265, prevent direct references to platform neutral Wix UI. Uh, so we have um, people out there that are bringing their V3 knowledge and just doing a UI ref straight into the uh Wix UI, like Wix UI underbar advanced or whatever they want, you know, minimal, so on and so forth. And it kind of works, it compiles, it builds an MSI, but that MSI is missing all of the platform specific custom actions, which are new in Wix 4 because we now have ARM support and x64 support, but the ARM is a big one. And then you get the uh, like an ice error later, uh, you end up with a broken package. So the the change here was to not let them refer to the pat the neutral Wix UI uh, IDs anymore, and say you need to refer to the the platform specific um, ID. So the hope here is that by breaking this path, this habit, not habit, I mean just what you learn pattern that from V three. By changing it here, at least we can get a breaking that they can go, wait, this doesn't work. Why doesn't this work? Oh, well, Wix 4 is a major upgrade. Therefore, there's a new way of doing this, which the correct way to do it is with the, the Wix UI element in the UI namespace, which, by the way, is what the converter will do. Um, but we've had people say, create a new project, add UI ref to this, things don't work right. And it's like, oh, yeah, too easy for them to end up in a bad place. So that was a a fix to hide the old platform neutral wish UI things to nudge people in the right direction of uh, how to get to the right place <laughs> with wish UI in V4, because it is different because we added all the platform specific stuff. Um, Cause now you can do ARM packages with custom actions. Thank you, Bob. Yay. You're welcome. I need a button that says the little clap, um, the audience clap thing. Platforms with me, ARM versus x86 versus x64. Correct, Zach. It is all the platforms that Wix supports right now. We have custom actions for all of them, and uh, you need to refer to them. Uh, if you refer to the platform neutral Wix UI stuff, which will not be possible in Wix 4, 4 RC4, if you do that now, you end up with not working UI in a couple different ways. And it's not well, obvious. To be clear, it, well, there, there are two problems. One is you will you will get ice errors if you suppress those you will get a, a license dialog that doesn't support printing oh what a shame <laughs> um, the the only real blocker is that th there's a custom action to validate the path unless you suppress that ah uh, yep and unfortunately the pattern is if you don't successfully validate it fails so yeah, that means it, you have to call the custom action. Yeah, it, it just, we lead you into a dead end and you need to not go there. So now we're gonna prevent you from getting into the dead end before you head down that way. All right, so let's look at, uh, if I refresh this, all these go away, I think. Hey, uh, Bob just has to give that to himself, take it off trash. All right, so we look at all the things that are in RC4. There have been five of them. We just talked about two of them, by the way. Um, the first one was a uh, leftover from RC3 of adding .NET Framework 481 support. Again, thank you, Bob. Uh, that was done actually very early in RC4. We have support for RC for .NET Framework 481 in RC4. Um, Blair pointed out an issue in the build files where a log file is not being handled correctly. So thank you, Blair. But a build process, internal build process, just makes that uh, batch file that you can use a little bit smarter. Not terribly uh, concerned about the functionality of Wix there. Um, the, the next one, argument out of range exception when creating a bundled project is 7250. This one is a little more interesting in that if you created a bundle package, but you did not specify an output type, then you could uh, get through where Wix would think that you're building an MSI would not tell you that you're, it thinks you're building an MSI and 
all kinds of weird things happen. And then you end up trying to do a validate of this non MSI and the validation process would crash and trying to get PDB. So it was basically a whole bunch of bad error cases when you forgot the output type inside your uh, project and it would default back to an MSI. So uh, now this is handled, this crash doesn't happen. You get uh, a warning of March earlier saying, hey, this is probably not what you want to min meant to do. And um, nothing crashes and there's now information telling you uh, what actually happened. So this is- It's a little weird though. Um, I mean, I know this is all on the MS build side, um, but we could pipe through the actual thing you're building, right? So you wouldn't have, I mean, you're building something with a bundle element, you're getting a bundle, not a package. Yeah, we'd have to, I think we have to look earlier in the build process than the build. It would work for this particular validation step, but I think there are other things that don't end up going quite right sure, as well. Sure. So the, the end result is it doesn't end up working nearly at all. And this is something that I think we could look at in Wix 5 of trying to get smarter. The whole entry section error messages are not yeah, great. That, that's where I was going. And every time I kind of get near them, I, I'm like, uh, we okay, we should need to do better naming here because how many of you in chat know what an entry section is? Um, what? That's obvious. Well, uh, oh. uh, chat actually has a good chance of knowing because they've been hanging out with us for, for quite a while. But for those of you playing along at home later, I've given you long enough to think about it. You should have yelled out your answer at the, the, the computer monitor or your phone, wherever you're watching this by now. Um, but the entry section is the, the main section. Like, is it a package? Is it a bundle? In this case, the entry section is this bundle block of code right here. And the error message when you get to the linker, which is where it figures out, hey, what am I actually building, is not so great. And there's probably work that we could do better to plumb that through than what we do today. And it's a little not so great because it works better from the command line than it does from MS build. Um, so it's kind of one of those things of, yeah, we should could do better, but not here. Anyway, so that was a, a straightforward fix of getting better error handling around that. And then I just talked about the launch conditions and the conversion and preventing direct reference from Wix UI to put people down a better path. Um, all of those technically would have been things that we didn't have to take. Um, they certainly make people's experiences better should they do those things, and people probably will do them. So I was very inclined to uh, take them. But I'm, we're kind of looking at issues now going, yeah, we didn't have to take any of these. So that's good, making progress. And at the end of that, Bob said, you know, we could go a week early. And I was like, yeah, we should go a week early. So we're going to go on March 7th, RC4. It's going to have these five fixes in it unless somebody opens something else between now and a week from tomorrow. Which would be the 17th, not the 7th. Sorry, did I say 7th? 17th. Yeah. 7th was two days ago. That was like, maybe it's when you said that we should try to about go to the 17th. Anyway, um, yeah, so that's that's what I'm saying. We're, we're, we're finishing. We're done. We're kind of like, yeah, this is it. If any big issues pop up, then we will slip it and I will send, I don't know, probably put it in the uh, discussions on GitHub, which is where I place to kind of announce things. Um, but right now, everything looks like we're going to go on the 17th of March, a week from tomorrow. That's all I have on triage. That's the review. Five bugs, the end. It's pretty good. That's pretty, pretty good. So now I'm going to go back and say, do people want to talk about questions, comments, things people want to talk about? Zach should have his question ready to go, dropping it in, uh, big things. Anything else anybody else wants to talk about? Um, other things going on? Um, Starting simple. Diffix app driver is deprecated, but there's nothing pointing to an alternative. Yes, that's correct, Zach. Diffix app is deprecated by Microsoft, and they have not provided an alternative. And we have not done the, I assume, massive amount of work to create an alternative to installing drivers inside an MSI. Um, if Microsoft, I mean, there's a lot of different ways it could go. Hey, it'd be great if, you know, if we really wanted to do it, Microsoft would give us the code. Cause I mean, they had it. Why throw it all away? We could at least go somewhere from here. Um, but yeah, the starting point for that is essentially zero because all the hard stuff is owned by Microsoft and they have deprecated it a while ago. So we're just kind of catching up our documentation and statements to what they've already said. There is no alternative provided today.
Late to the party, I came out on a hunch, was wondering why there's no more announcements in Wix devs on meetings because Wix devs is dead and I am behind on entering all of or sending all those mails. I need to do that. I, I was hoping I would get to it like this last week, but I've been really busy at Fire Giant. So I just haven't, I need to send all those things. But yeah, Wix devs is, Wix devs and Wix users are both going and we are now on, are gone. I mean, and we'll now be moving to GitHub. Um, Getting intermittent file in use error on pro in a project reference from building my wish project, but I haven't tried to narrow it down yet. Mm. Okay. Where a wish project depends on A and B and A also depends on B. And file in use error is an MS build thing, Zach? Like, is that an MS build error or is it Wix spitting out the error? Who's complaining about the file in use? Um, I mean, Jacob's right. It's the, Capturing a bid log for every single build. Uh, I, I haven't seen anything related to that myself. I think Jacob's right. Get a try to not try. Put a bin log on all of your builds. And then when it happens, the bin log should be very helpful in tracking down who had that file in contention. And if it's in Wix, uh, yeah, we end up with files in use all over. We've tried to become more, much more robust on accessing files in Wix with lots of retries. Uh, and MS build has done that in a number of places. There are some places where it has not. So, um, that would be the thing to look at is to look at maybe we're missing a retry or, and maybe some part of MS build needs another retry, so on and so forth. I, a bin log is where you'd want to start narrowing down, um, whose fault that might be. Yeah, I was going to say, I thought we did a good job in four of, of retrying all IO. Yeah, I, I, we made a concerted effort to do that. I'm not going to say that we got it all because <laughs> we might have missed one. Um, and and Zach, if you are we still trying to build the burn into end tests in parallel? I don't, I, I don't remember. We could look at it. I, I, mean, I tried to parallelize everything at one point or another, and anything that had an intermittent failure, then I turned it off. But I, because I have not tried to spend time running down intermittent failures. In those things, but our build process is not simple in all cases either. So, but it, well, it could I think be the that would be the best place to check. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm trying to remember. I know it was at one point, and I yeah, I have vague memories of of some of it going away. I was looking at it briefly for uh, building everything on ARM because if you have some ARM sixty four hardware. Theoretically, you should be able to run the entire Wix build using the ARM version of Visual Studio, and then we could build all of our end, -end tests as ARM packages. And then, while I'm dreaming on the pipe, is uh, to run all of the tests in uh, Sandbox. Coming from one of the dependency projects, that I would be surprised if that's Wix. Then I, I, I won't say it's definitely not us, but it's in one of the other projects. I mean, we don't we try not to hold on to anything for a long time. So, and if it's another project that usually happens before Wix builds, so I, it, if it's not in a Wix project, it's less likely it's us. Especially if it's before the Wix project, then it's very unlikely that it's Wix because. All we're doing is saying, go build this stuff. And then when Wix runs the Innis project, it does its stuff. Otherwise, we don't really have much code running inside your build process. Um, but getting bin logs is very, very useful. Um, in the Wix tool set, we've tried to go through and, and instrument all of our build commands so that they all generate a bin log. And that is very helpful when something goes wrong. You just, we get a zip of all the different bin logs of all the different builds and you can work your way through and figure out, oh, that's what happened in that one and start root causing from there. Bin logs are your friend. Um, same as MSI, except in that case, it's just a verbose log, which is text um, and a lot harder to read. Anyway, other things people want to talk about, other stuff going on. Zach, is there anything else about your issues or a third point? Um, other things to talk about? Yeah. Yeah, the only place I see it is Wix is when a sub price are kicked off, but that's fair and common targets. I don't think I'm going to... Yeah, no, I mean, we... 
we ask MS Build to go build those projects. But after that, the it's all MS Build and that project system. Wix is we don't have like a lot of we don't have any code that should be long running during that that part of the process. Our long running code, like actually accessing files and all that, happens later in a Wix project from that point. Other things people have going on? All right. Uh, what do people think about going Wix 4, RC4 on March 17th and Wix 4 on April 5th? April 5th is the 19th birthday of Wix being open source. Did I do math right? Yes. 19th year of Wix being open source. I That's think we should think. slip Wix 4 for a year. Yeah. Come out on the 20th. Yeah. No, 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 no. No, we're gonna we're gonna try to do something better. We're gonna try to ship Wix five on the twentieth. That'll do. I th I think that's that's I, I, that's the the next line in the sand to draw a little ways away. Is like let's try to hit that date and see if we can do that one. I think that would be good. It gets us off of your Christmas uh, request, so we're not doing releases over the holidays, and um, well, we're not doing pre releases during the holidays. And we're not doing pre releases during the holidays and things like that. Like that, I think that. I like the idea. Plus, it's you know a year after Wix four, so yeah. Release on our our anniversary of being open source. Yeah, I'm all right with that. Okay. Yeah. I've been killing time. See if anybody had anything else to do. Uh, I I don't know when we're going to talk about Wix five. Um, I, I'm not thrilled about Wix four documentation. I less than readable than V three, but I feel like I'm way late for feedback. Super useful. Well, actually, so uh, before we jump to the scene. The Wix 4 documentation is now on the website, so we can improve and change and make that better, you know, after Wix 4 is done, uh, like, essentially in near real time. It's like, do your change, pull request, about 10 minutes later, that has been fixed. It's not like Wix 3, where a lot of the documentation was built into a chum that was then shared with the website, so you had to make a change to the core tool set uh, repository to have it get pushed up to the website. That doesn't happen. Now it's all on the Wix um, website there. Um, and then we have plans on Fire Giant to go do a lot of work on the documentation that we own to get that that body of work up to Wix four. Um, but it's you know, at this point in time a lot of its resources and getting fixes into the code and getting documentation up to date and all those things all at the same time. So, uh, Zach, I'm curious what you mean by readable. Are you talking about the content or the the new layout on the on the doc pages, which are very different, um, certainly different than the chum. Because a lot of the content, like in the reference material, the schema reference that, you know, started from V3 and is improved, but not, you know, dramatically rewritten. Um, but the layout for those pages is very different than what we had in the chum. And some of that is under our control. I don't know how much of it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, but, I don't disagree with you there. Right. That's kind of the difference between using the, uh, the bullet the, or the, the definition versus a table, a big table kind of thing. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, but, yeah. So, <laughs> Uh, tables are interesting, um, but the the problem is tables don't do well in the in the theme that we have here. Um, if you look at some of the because I mean some topics, especially outside of the reference, do have uh, tables and they tend to be pretty narrow. And I don't, you know, I, I have a fairly wide window for my, you know, for the browser I use to look at wixsoulset.org. But between the the la nav bar on the left and then the narrower one on the right that has the, the table of contents for the page, tables don't do well in the remaining width. And they tend to, you know, start to need scrolling pretty quickly. When I wrote the tooling to create the doc out of the XSD files, it started with a table and it didn't work. 
and I don't know if we have you know any other option there. Certainly, we can do more um, with their you know with the documentation on the attributes. Um, but I don't think a table is the solution just because of the width of the column. But the, the stylization and all those kind of things can all be done. For example, that content's all generated. So changing everything to yeah. a table is going and updating the tool that generates the HTML for that. I mean, not trivial, but it can be done until we get to a place that we're like, yeah, no, this is this is really good. Let's go with that. Um, yeah. And we, which is nice because we don't have to, that does not have to release Wix. That can just be done on the website at essentially any time that someone wants to go do the work. So yeah. uh, if you like the table better, then it's straightforward to go kind of play with the HTML and try to get a table that fits well in there and go from there. If we could find a better layout, all for it. Um, none of us are designers and certainly not CSS web designers. So um, if people want to come up and say, hey, I can make this look better, certainly we would entertain that. Um, well, also we have to deal within some limitations like we're not generating generating HTML, we're generating Markdown, uh, which right. does further limit our flexibility. Yeah, there are things you uh, could do right. in HTML and CSS um, that is uh, at least harder and maybe impossibly harder um, in in Markdown. Yeah, well, but it's, it's all places that, that we can play. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's not. And and truthfully, you know, I don't know that we're going to get. I don't know the CSS is the answer to everything, um, but we could certainly do more um, with, you know, within the constraints of what we're doing today, we can certainly do different things. Right. Um, right. I ended up at this, you know, for the attributes just as, okay, we have these bits of information. Let's put it out. So there are definitely opportunities that people want to spend time stylizing and refining the documentation pages. And all those tools are just, you know, your typical C Sharp app. Yep. And C Sharp on, console apps. And they're all in the web project. Yep. So they're nice and isolated from everything else, everything we need to build the web project. Um all right. I think that's it. Um the question I had was given that we're going a week earlier, do we should we have a meeting next week just before the release? Or if everything's going fine, everybody knows, so we don't need to do a meeting. I mean, ideally, there's no issues to talk about, and we're just ready to go. What do you guys think? Are you asking to do an additional meeting or to start throwing us off into a different uh, uh, every other week? Might just be an additional meeting. Um, I, I'm flexible on whatever we want to do there. Do we think we should pre-schedule the meeting for next week before the release? No. Okay. We could do one if um, you know an issue comes in over the next few days, and oh no, is this serious? We don't know. We need we need to have a meeting of the brain trust. Okay. But that's fine with me. Seems like an additional meeting might be nice because you expect this to be our, our, our Well, I mean, mm, yeah. my hope is there's nothing to talk about. Uh, yeah, that's, that's where I get if, if we have something to talk about, we should have a meeting because, you know, it's not like it costs extra money. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, no, no, it does not cost extra money. All right, right now we're not going to plan it. And, um, of course, uh, we'll send out things to GitHub issues. Um uh, we'll send things to GitHub issues, uh, to GitHub discussions. I keep saying issue. I mean, that's not, then the issue is true. Anyway, to GitHub discussions, if there's a meeting scheduled for next week, and I will make it clear if that's happened. And I need to email Wix Dev and Wix users to say that these are no longer being used. I do need to send those emails. Um, I have a set of things that I'm hoping I can breathe a little bit and do. Grant, I did say that last week and to get to them. So I, I know it's just like, uh, the, the documentation the suggests that. Um, the mailing lists are being deprioritized. Yep. And I don't know who wrote that word because that's just horrible. Um, oh, it was me. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, we haven't, they're not shut down. They're not read only. So, yeah, but you see there. no traffic there. So, I think we've had 
two got emails to Wix users. Today. Really? Just today we got three. Yeah. Really? Wow. Well, it's still a valid list. Wow. It is. Yeah. It's still out there. Maybe right. we need to do a bigger, you know, announcement. But I do. No, no, absolutely do need to. So we need to go do that. Definitely need to do that. All right. That's it. So we will be back in two weeks then on our normal cadence. Um, talking about, well, how RC4 went and how things are looking at the end, roughly end of the first week of RC4 being out there. And uh, that's that. I don't have anything else to talk about today. The issues were really good in RC4, like minimal and, and that kind of stuff, which was very encouraging. So I hope it remains that way uh, throughout RC4 and we don't really take anything after next Friday or even next week. So there we are. We're we'll back in two weeks, unless something big happens and I'll send a, a different message out to uh, Wix uh, on GitHub's discussions. And that's it. Two weeks from now, same place, same time. And uh, we're just kind of waiting around, wait and see if issues pop up. So until then, you guys have a good one week, get RC4 and then uh, we'll see you in the week after that to talk about how RC4 is going. Till then, talk to you guys later. Bye. Bye. Bye.